So we spent a lot of time in the last videos defining what we mean by non-coherent communication, coming up with the optimum decision rules in terms of the maximum likelihood sense for making decisions, deriving what the probability of error is for non-coherent communication. These are all very general results. Let's go ahead and look at a very specific type of non-coherent communication called binary frequency shift keying, and that is abbreviated BFSK. Binary frequency shift keying uses this signal set right here. So the ith signal is square root of 2 times a cosine omega i t plus phi sub i, and that is time limited on 0 to capital T. So nothing happens with the cosine amplitude as a function of the signal. Everything having to do with information is stored in the frequency of the signal, as you would expect, since this is a frequency shift keying scheme. So this is the form of the signals. So there are two signals, when i is 0 and i is 1, so there's some frequency omega 0 and omega 1, and also some phase theta 0 and theta 1. If you were to plot these signals as a function of time, what you would see on a very you know, large number of signals in a row is you would see a cosine whose amplitude was fixed just toggling between different frequencies. So it might be fast for a little bit, fast frequency, then switch to slow, and then switch back to fast, etc. What we're going to do here, as usual, we assume that wi times t, so the carrier frequency times the simple time, is some multiple of 2 pi. And that just makes the analysis in terms of the cross terms, their integrals, go to 0. How would I receive a BFSK such as this using non-coherent techniques? So here is the optimum receiver for binary frequency shift keying. And really all we've done is we've just taken the original general scheme that we had you know, about 40 charts ago, and we have specialized it for the case of BFSK. So for binary frequency shift keying, when we do non-coherent demodulation, the top two branches are looking for frequency omega zero. The bottom two branches are looking for frequency omega one, and they work by doing correlation, integration, and then getting the decision statistics. So here's u0, v0, u1, v1. We square each of those and add them together, and that's what we call r0 squared. We square each of these and add them together, and that's what we call r1 squared. And we know how to do the optimal decision. If this quantity is bigger than this quantity, we declare s0 of t. If this quantity is bigger than this quantity, we declare s1 of t. So we've taken that general non-coherent receiver and we've just specialized it for this special case of BFSK. And notice nowhere in here am I using the phase of the carrier. Phi zero does not appear anywhere in this scheme. There is no phi zero up here anywhere. Similarly, phi one does not show up. There's no phi one up here either. And we know that this will work because we just went through the analysis in general for how to decode any binary non-coherent scheme. This is just us specializing it to the case of BFSK. Using non-coherent demodulation for BFSK might make sense. If tracking the carrier is something difficult to do, it's definitely going to be tough to track it as you're toggling between frequencies constantly. Every time the transmitter um, waveform generator switches between frequencies, your phase lock loop is going to have to adjust to this new carrier and start retracking that new carrier. So using a non-coherent scheme to demodulate a communication scheme that's jumping around in frequency a lot is definitely a practical thing to do.